What's up, everybody? Hey, sir. Thanks for coming. Um, it's good. You know, we showed a lot of toughness this weekend. Uh, just the whole week, four and one on the week. Uh, five game week, you know, obviously a four game series on the weekends are, are just mentally challenging. And, you know, I thought we did a good job. Um, found a way to win. I don't, we didn't play our best baseball this weekend. But you got to give a lot of credit for them. They kept us off, our t uh, you know, offensively just out of sync and uh, just kept us off balance. And, um, you know, they're a really, really tough, tough team. Typical California team. They do a bunch of different things and base running and fake breaking and, and bunning and stealing. And, um, and they don't strike out a lot um, and, and really put the ball in play and really make you work. Um, and so uh, we, had to, we had to fight through some stuff. Um, again, we got to play a lot better, but I'm proud of the kids. You got to find ways, great teams find ways to win these type of weekends, win series um, against these types of teams when, when you don't necessarily play your best baseball. So, um, you know, as much as we need to get a lot of work in and get better and, and get back to kind of doing the things that we've done well so up to this point this weekend, um, we, we've got to be we've got to be a lot better. Um, but I'm proud. I'm proud of the kids uh, for finding a way. Um, and I think after the first inning, both Joe Sheridan and the team could have just thrown in the towel and been like, today doesn't look like our day. Joe came out and gave us three more huge innings, um, and then we just kept kept playing the game. Um, obviously, got some big hits, a huge home run by McCabe, and a big safety squeeze from Orlando uh, gave us some breathing room. Uh, and the bullpen was tremendous. Um, I thought Litch managed. Uh, you know didn't look as good as he has, um, but found a way to get out. And then Salt comes in and gets that huge out. Billy McKay throwing on a third day in a row um, came up huge. And then Hagenson getting a two-out save, which, you know, he doesn't do a lot, but, um, you know, we needed it. And so he stepped up and, and really shut the door and, and was dominant. So um, it was a great team win. A lot of guys did some good things. Again, we got to clean up some stuff, but, um, you know, it was a good week, good way to finish the week. I uh, with McKay, really. The big strike out of Newman, I thought, mm -hmm. really stood out. I mean, yeah. Works for, what works so well for him, being able to do it three days in a row? Yeah, I mean, one, he, from obviously the arm angle, but I mean, this is what he's done, you know, his two years in junior college. I mean, I, he, he about led the, the Florida Junior College in innings and never never started a game. Or he did start some games, but I mean, he pitched almost 80% of their games somehow. And it's just what he's he can do is he bounces back. He's never sore. Um, he's just able to show up every single day. And, you know, those guys are, are really tough to tough to pick up. So uh, he's able to compete. And, and some of those times when those guys throw from those angles, the, the more tired they get, the, the slower the ball comes, the more it, more it moves. You know what I mean? So sometimes it actually be, be a help uh, more than a deterrent. Like more like other guys, where you know Jeff Hagenson throwing three days in a row is going to lose a bunch of velocity, and it kind of takes away what his strength is. Billy, it actually makes the ball move a little bit more, and uh, so he's just able to do it. He's he's geared towards it. He's done it for the last three years, and um, you know again, just proud of him. I know he's been frustrated that he hasn't been used more, and, uh, but a huge weekend for him to come out and throw in all three games. It was, it was big. And you get some offense out of the catcher spot too. Uh, what games in a row? Yeah, I mean, good. Yeah, just it's what we expected him to be. You know, coming into the season, didn't have a great fall early. Um, but again, if you're just about the process, you just show up every day and do the work and um, and just relax, settle in. I mean, I, um, just seems more relaxed back there than he has been all, all year. And um, he's a really, really talented kid and, and did a lot for us last year. And, you know, um, it's good to see him have some success and be able to play the game the way we know he can. How beneficial do you think the early part of the season will be with the way the schedule shaped out? Obviously, Auburn last weekend playing a tough Northridge team this weekend for four games. I mean, it's for a group of mostly newcomers that have played pretty well. It just shows how much our programs change too. I think is a good test of just the mental toughness and how tough we really are. Um, and I think this group has got the makeup to be able to handle these types of situations. I think we showed it. Obviously, Auburn gave us a lot of confidence. Um, but I think just this, again the stuff we've done in the weight room, the stuff we've done in the fall, um, the coaching staff, just really all being, and not just the coaching staff, but the whole entire support staff, just being on the same page and, and really just um, having and breeding this culture. Culture. And but again, a lot of it is the older guys, um, you know, um, that have really set the tone and, and really kind of changed the way you know the trajectory of the program in term, terms of just the toughness. And so we get challenged big time by two huge weekends. Um, and I think I thought we answered the bell in terms of you know obviously what we did at Auburn was tremendous. We played unbelievable baseball, and today you know this whole week. Uh, we didn't play the best, uh, but we were able to find ways to win, and that's what tough teams were able to do. So when you look back at teams that are in the regional, super regionals, and the College World Series, like 
you, you got to find ways to win when you don't play your best. And, who are the older guys? Which a couple older guys been leading yeah. the way. Who, who have you seen really step up this offseason? Well, season? obviously Dalton is, is is on the offensive side is a true leader, but obviously Jeffrey is just a tone setter. Um, Jordan Rathbone's been just great at just getting after it and, and just showing up every day and working. Um, you know, and McKay, I mean, the same thing. Those guys just really care a lot. Um, they work hard in the weight room, um, and so they've been a great job offensively. And then on the mound, I mean, obviously Salt and Stahl and, and Helsel and um, and Hakinson. I mean, and Joe Sheridan. I mean, all these guys are workers. People have seen how much work Joe has put in uh, to get back to, to being able to pitch. And so, um, but again, and it's just and the pitching has always been really tough. I mean, there's been the culture on the pitching staff since we got here. Just you know, you look back at the Robbie Howells and the Juan Pimentels and the Bryce Tuckers and Eric Eric, Eric Heppels. But those guys really set the tone for the for the pitchers. Um, but offensively, we've really really come a long way in toughness. And um, again, it's a one a huge testament to the support staff and, and the staff in general, but a big, huge testament to our players. Just you know, just kind of wanting to be different and wanting to to show that uh, they can match what the pitchers were doing. So um, those guys have done a tremendous job of being. I mean, even the young guys. I mean, Matt Archer is just an absolute phenomenal uh, player, worker. Pablo, Pablo is. Um, you know, he came in as a freshman in the fall and just um, not really leading, but just like pushing guys like he get done running in a, in a tough running thing and some guys are like you know laid out like oh my gosh I can't believe I just did that I'm finished and he's turning around and going and getting more guys and, and running with them and trying to push them and and that was just kind of how it all the I mean again this is these are kids that chose to play for me and, and, uh, and play for this culture and then wanted to, to build this and so from day one all the new players like have just been these young guys have been tremendous and just caring and wanting to be great and wanting to take this program to the next level so um, as much as we've done you know you know there's been a great synergy in our staff that has grown and has been the best it's ever been but you really got to give a lot of credit to the players for just uh, believing and wanting and um, following each other and, and, and really buying in. What you say about Pablo taking that work ethic and what he shows to the field pre pre today? Yeah. I mean, he's just a super athletic kid, man, that just loves to be on the field, loves to play, and loves to be in the moment. And he's going to be so so good, you know, and there's, you know, you, you got to be careful how much you harness him, and you got to let him play and let him do his thing and let him fail a little bit and, and learn. But, man, you can just see how athletic he is and see how, how talented he is. And he's going to keep growing and, and keep getting getting better. I mean, I, as good as he is right now, there's there's so much more left in him that it's going to be fun to watch in the next couple of years. You want to be aggressive on the base pass. There's a lot of outs at third base today. A couple at home. Just your thoughts about being too over aggressive, or do you think it was still worth it? Um, you know, a little bit of both. I mean, we pride ourselves on being aggressive. That's that's part of our MO and that's part of the culture of a program. And so you don't want to harness it too much, you know. Um, I thought for the most part uh, they were all good decisions and guys just trying to play the game hard and and, and, and trying to take the extra 90 feet. Um, and, you know, you, you bust your butt out of the box like and you get thrown out. I mean, the guy made a perfect throw on the triple for Jeffrey. Like, yeah, two throws, they hit a guy in the chest, and the guy throws the ball six inches off the ground on the bag. Like, if it's a chest high throw, a knee high throw, he's probably safe. And, but you got to, so you got to give credit to those guys. Like, you got to make them make perfect throws. And so those types of situations, like, I can live with all day long. Um, uh, so, you know, again, like, it's unfortunate <laughs> that we got thrown out a lot uh, today, but, um, you know, we're going to continue to be aggressive and continue to play our game. Joe did, didn't have his best stuff today, but he was able to at least get you four innings yep. so you, until you know you could bring Lich and then mm -hmm. kind of the bridge, the bullpen until you get to Hakinson. Yeah, it was huge, huge. I mean, again, after the first inning, I think very easily he and the team could have given up and he could have been like, today's not my day, I don't feel good, but got to be able to grind. Um, and, you know, it started getting better and getting more comfortable and was able to get through those four innings and two times through the lineup. And um, I, I thought it was a, a, a true sign of maturity and, and a true sign of toughness when you're able to, again, we talk so much about, okay, like just get out of the game with a four, with giving up four runs. Like you can't do anything about that. Let's go and just plow forward. Um, and I think the best, they always talk about um, when you don't have your best stuff, the, the best find ways to keep their team and give their team a chance to win. And so uh, that's, you know, 
a, an immature or selfish player goes out there in the second inning, like, oh my gosh, like I can't believe I gave up four runs, and four runs turns into seven runs, and and then you put yourself in a real bad situation. But um, he's a competitor and a mature guy, and has seen it and understands it, and goes out there and does his job and and finds a way to to save three innings for us and give us a chance. Our offense came back, um, and then and our bullpen did the rest. So. All right, second weekend, by the way, you played the four games. Yeah. You talked about how this helps you from a scheduling standpoint, not having to play non uh, mm -hmm. midweeks yeah. later in the year. Is this something you might try to explore more down the road in the year? Because it seems like you're able to find out a lot about your team playing these games, and especially with your arms. Yeah, no, no doubt. I mean, especially early on when you're you, you're trying to learn some guys and see where they're at, especially on the mound. Even we, you know, against Siena, we got to start a bunch of different guys, give some guys some different opportunities. So um, it definitely, uh, they're tough. They're mentally challenging. Um, but it kind of shows you where you're at mentally and um, and, uh, and gives you a chance. And then, then you can kind of back off as you get later to the year and kind of uh, refresh. And when, and when the season really starts to become a grind and it starts to get hotter and all that kind of stuff, you've got some more days of rest and more, more off days or whatnot. So hopefully it sets us up pretty good. Um, you know, We'll see how it goes. You know, it seems great right now, but you know, long way to go, and a lot of more things we got to accomplish and try to get done. Thanks, guys. Thank Appreciate you, you coming.